AP Micro Exam FRQ number three. It's a labor or factor market question. Um, first of all, I am going to make a little table here. Best I can. Ooh, that's not going to work, is it? Let's see here if I can do that again. Do I have to do another one here? Okay, that's kind of strange. Um, all right. Let's just draw, oops, what is that doing? Can I get rid of that? Choose another one. Hmm. All right, um, choose another one. I probably could just do quicker by drawing them freehand. That one's a little crooked. All right. So, draw, you've got plenty of time for these, right? You have an hour for three FRQs. Um, go ahead and take your time to make sure that you draw these correctly. And do them the same way every time. That way... Why is that? What am I not doing here? Oh, maybe that would work better. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So, user error. All right. So, once you've drawn these little tables, I could have done it much quicker just by freehanding it, but it's fine. Um, I know that what they've given me is total product here. And these tables tend to be always done the same way. Number of workers, total product. I'm going to find marginal product. I'm going to multiply that by the price of the good. That's going to give me my marginal revenue product. And I'm going to compare that to my marginal revenue cost. We can see that the wage rate or the marginal revenue cost is $8 an hour. The market price of pencils is 2 bucks. So $2 all the way down. Looks like $8 all the way down here for the wage. Understand that your marginal revenue cost could also be called your marginal factor cost. It is your supply of labor. It is the wage. Your marginal revenue product is your demand for labor. Marginal product we get from the change in total product. So we've got eight and then what is that? Five, seven, and then six, and then five, and then is that four? Um, yeah. Three, sorry, brain, I'm thinking I'm having a stroke or something. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That would have been nice to know. I had to figure it out in my head. Uh, easy enough. So eight times two. Each worker, this first worker produces eight, what are we making, pencils? We can sell them each for $2 each. So looks like 16, 14, 12, 10, 8, 6, and 4, and obviously 2. So, understand here that this MRP implies this is what each worker brings into our company. This first worker produces eight. We can sell two at $2 each. He brings $16 in to the company. Um, and we only pay him eight. I like this guy a lot. This guy brings $14 into the company. I only pay him eight. I like him. I like him. I like him. We're going to hire where your marginal revenue product equals your marginal revenue cost. This is our profit maximizing point to hire, right? We can't always get there, but in this instance, we did get there. We got exactly there uh, where marginal revenue product equals marginal revenue cost. So let's go back. Now that we've done our table, we find out how many workers we can hire. We go back and we say, using marginal analysis, state the condition for employing the profit max. We've already done that. Uh, how many workers should lead mill hire to maximize profit? We've already done that. It's five. And we would just explain uh, with the fifth worker, the marginal revenue product, uh, which is equal to the marginal product times the price of the good. Marginal revenue product is equal to marginal revenue cost. Therefore, we would hire five workers. If the wage rate decreased to $6 per hour, how many workers would they employ? So if the wage rate suddenly changes and goes down to 6 well, we still want to compare the marginal revenue product to the marginal revenue cost. Look at that. They're equal 
with the sixth worker. Now we're going to hire, if the wage rate goes down, we would hire one more worker. I like it. Um, so we would hire six. We don't have to explain anything. If the wage rate was six, which it is now, and the price of pencils goes down to one, so all of that becomes one, which means really we're just looking at our marginal product here. Can we see that if this would make this marginal product would become our marginal revenue product and we've got six here six here right uh, i could have done the math here and just made this all one and changed the numbers it would have still been the same numbers here so your marginal product is your marginal revenue product in this instance and we would hire three workers because that would be where so when the price of pencils goes down we hire three workers. Now, we could have shown this. They don't ask us to explain it, but we know that marginal product times the price of the good equals marginal revenue product. If your price goes down, your marginal revenue product goes down, which means your demand for labor has to go down. And this should make sense. Let's just draw it real quick. Again, the wage is the same, so it's flat horizontal. This is our supply of labor, our MRC, MFC. Label it the same every time so you don't forget. Demand for labor is downward sloping, MRP. Obviously, this is the wage at, let's just say, 8 bucks. Um, noticed what happened here is that when the wage was 8 and then suddenly the wage decreased down to 6, we hired more people. That made sense, didn't it? Um, it should have made sense. Um, let's let's back that up though, and get rid of that, and understand that really on the end here, what it said was that the wage rate was six. Let's draw it in. But then the price of pencils decreased to one. So we know when the price goes down, marginal revenue goes down, marginal revenue product goes down, which makes your demand for labor decrease. So demand for labor would have shifted to the left. Quantity of labor would have decreased. As the price of the good goes down, demand for labor decreases, marginal revenue product decreases. They didn't ask us to draw it, but it's nice to see it uh, as a graph. Um, all right, guys, be safe, take care.